In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Greetings, beloved of the Lord. You are listening to Catholic Meditation. I am Father Blessed Ambang Njume. Today is Sunday, the 26th of March, 2023. It is the fifth Sunday of Lent, Church Year A. Thanks for joining us. Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which out of love for the world your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 12 to 14. The responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 130. The response to the psalm is, With the Lord there is mercy, in him is plentiful redemption. The second reading is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 8 to 11. The gospel is taken from St. John, chapter 11, verses 1 to 45. The theme for today's meditation is Jesus is the life who gives us new life. Jesus is the life who gives us new life. Dearly beloved of the Lord, today is the fifth Sunday of Lent. It is the penultimate week. Next Sunday will be Palm Sunday the last week of Lent, and will begin Holy Week, the climax of the season. The practice of covering crosses and images throughout the church from this Sunday may be observed if the Conference of Bishops so decides. Crosses remain covered until the end of the celebration of the Lord's Passion on Good Friday, but images remain covered until the beginning of the Easter Vigil. On this fifth Sunday of Lent, all three readings talk about life, the life that God gives us his children. The theme, therefore, of this Sunday is Jesus' life, and he will raise us from our graves and give us new life. Only he who has life can give life. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. John chapter 14, verse 6. Again he says, I am the resurrection and the life. John chapter 11, verse 25. He is life itself, and so he can give us life. In him we live and move and have our being, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17, verse 28. But why is the focus on life this Sunday? We are drawing close to Easter. The readings this Sunday begin to give us a foretaste and usher us to the new life that Easter brings. We shall die to sin. We will die with Christ. We will be buried with him in baptism and shall rise with him to a new life at Easter. In the first reading, the prophet Ezekiel tells the people what God says. I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you and you shall live. Ezekiel chapter 37 verses 12 to 14. The grave the prophet talks about is not a physical one 
as we find at cemeteries. It is a metaphorical one. Israel had been in a grave of suffering. They had been in the grave of captivity and slavery in Babylon. They had been in the grave of dejection, abandonment, pain, and frustration. This is the image we capture when we think and see graves. Decay, filth, skeletons, darkness, cold, loneliness. This is exactly what Israel was going through while they were on exile in Babylon. But the prophet tells them, God will raise them up from those graves of dejection, abandonment, loneliness, frustration, pain, when he will take them back to their land. Returning home will bring them life. On exile, they were dead and buried. No longer will they be exiles. No longer will they be abandoned and rejected. God will put his spirit in them and they shall live a new life. This reminds us of this beautiful song, culled from Psalm 104. Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. It is the spirit of God that gives us this new life. The spirit of God renews. The spirit of God refreshes. If you do not have that spirit of God in you, then you are dead. If you do not have the Spirit of God, then you are dead in sin. You live in sin and you are dead. This is what St. Paul explains in the second reading of today. He makes a distinction between those who live in the Spirit and those who are dead in the flesh. Those who live in the flesh are dead because of sin. But when we live in the Spirit, then we do what pleases God. Then we have life. And when we live in the Spirit, that Spirit that raised Christ from death shall also raise up our mortal bodies to give us new life. As a fulfillment of this, by the Spirit of God, Jesus raises Lazarus from death as we read in the Gospel Pericope. He calls Lazarus out from his own physical grave and gives him physical life. This raising of Lazarus also foreshadows Jesus' resurrection. He will rise from his physical grave on the third day after he had been buried. Now, beloved of the Lord, how can we apply these readings to our lives? In the first reading, we hear of the prophet Ezekiel telling the Israelites that God will raise them from their graves and return them to their land when they will live from exile. In the second reading, St. Paul tells us the Spirit of God gives us life, and as that Spirit raised up Jesus from the dead, so too the Spirit of God will give life to our own mortal bodies. In the Gospel, Jesus raises Lazarus from death. How can we apply these readings to our lives? We too, like Israel and like Lazarus, have been buried in our own metaphorical graves of hardships of troubles, pains, distress, stress, trauma, dejection, loneliness, abandonment, frustration, and worst of all, we have been buried in the grave of sin. We are all lost, as it were, we have no life. But Jesus tells us today, he wants to give us new life. He wants to raise us out from our own graves like he did to Lazarus in the gospel story and give us new life. God tells us, like he told the Israelites to, through the prophet Ezekiel, he wants to raise us up from our own graves. It is also a foreshadowing of the resurrection on the last day. As we read in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraphs 988 to 991, yes, on that day of resurrection, all the dead will rise. God will give us new life. But beloved, it is not just rising to new life. We may also rise to eternal damnation. Therefore, ask yourself today, do you want this new life that Jesus promises? Do you want to live forever 
Do you want life that never ends? We pray when we say the glory be to the Father, as it was in the beginning is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We want eternal life. We want life that lasts forever. But the question is, what do we need to do to gain this life of Christ? The Israelites, they had physical life. When they returned to Israel, oh, they died again. When Lazarus was raised, oh, he died again. But Jesus gives us life that will live forever. And this is what St. Paul explains in the second reading. We should not, therefore, hunger for this physical life. We shall die someday. We should rather hunger for eternal life that makes us live forever. And what can we do to have this eternal life? One, we must live in the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God gives us eternal life. If you live in the flesh, beloved, you will have physical life. The flesh wants all the pleasures it can get. But the Spirit of God, living in the Spirit of God, we have eternal life. And how can we live in the Spirit of God? Second, it is living the life of the sacraments. You cannot have eternal life, beloved, if you do not live in the sacraments. Jesus tells us in John chapter 6, If you eat my body and drink my blood, you will have eternal life. You will live forever. So ask yourself, do you receive Holy Communion? That is what gives you eternal life. Do not only hunger for this physical life, you will die. Lazarus was raised to physical life, but he died again. Hunger for eternal life, and it is the life of the sacraments. Do you go to the sacrament of confession? It gives us eternal life. What is more, it is in keeping the commandments of God. When we do all this, beloved, we shall have eternal life, that life that lasts forever. Let us pray and beg God for that grace, that he may raise us up from our physical graves of pain, from our metaphorical graves of suffering and dejection and of sin, and give us eternal life. And that life we can have is only when we have the Spirit of God. This is what we should pray for this fifth Sunday of Lent. Easter is not far. Let us pray God to have that eternal life, so that when Easter comes, we may rise with Christ to that new life and live with Him in the kingdom of heaven, where He lives and reigns with God the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Happy Sunday and God bless you. Seek for eternal life and only Jesus can give you that life that lasts forever.